ESD and EMR techniques in Germany, and he has been collaborating with um, Japan quite for a long time. And uh, thank you very much for your talk. Mr. Chairman, thank you for uh, the introduction. Manfred, thank you very much for inviting me um, to this wonderful meeting. So, my talk is about uh, EMR and ESD in rectal cancer. The question is, can this treatment be sufficient in uh, cyst disease? And I would say yes, it can, but it has limitations. Um, if you treat uh, malignancy in the GI tract, usually we know that uh, it depends on the penetration depth. Mucosal cancer have a risk of 0% to uh, have a lymph nodes, positive lymph nodes. The borderline will be the submucosa, and in the different locations of the GI tract, the risk is different for lymph node metastasis. In the Barrett's or squamous cell cancer, uh, it's quite higher if you have only limited penetration depths. In the colon cancer, in the rectal cancer, we have heard um, SM1 might be uh, an indication for local treatment. We have learned from our surgeons that we have to achieve our zero resection. That means the horizontal and the vertical um, direction of the tumor should be resected complete. <coughs> our block resection is very important to um, achieve a curative treatment. Um, many of our patients uh, have uh, benign polyps, and the risk for malignancy is quite low, but nevertheless we have some uh, polyps with a benign histology and after resection the polyp was defined as malignant by the pathologist and therefore we have to differentiate the macroscopic view of these lesions. We differentiate the so-called lateral spreading tumor, a uh, so-called granulotype with a homogeneous area of nodules and these lesions are usually benign. Though you can treat these lesions easily with EMR or ESD, <clears throat> the so-called non-granular type lesions have a higher risk of malignancy, and therefore this is a good indication in Japan to treat such lesions with ESD to achieve an unblock curative resection. Here are some um, examples. This is a granular type lesion. It can be easily resected by piecemeal EMR. The only disadvantage of EMR versus ESD is that you have a higher lo local recurrence rate in uh, this lesions after resection. The so-called mixed type has larger nodules, and there is an increased risk of having a malignancy or submucosal invasion of the tumor. And finally, the non-granular type lesion. This lesions have a high risk of invasive cancer and shouldn't be treated with EMR. We know from Japan, from Uruoka, that cis lesions, the non-granular type lesions, have a risk of about 14 to 20 percent to be an invasive cancer. And uh, the invasiveness of this lesion is different between SM1 or SM3. Though Therefore, we have guidelines in, in Germany to differentiate a low risk from a high risk situation. Um, the grading, the vessel infiltration, and finally the submucosal infiltration of the tumor. And if you have a, a submucosal infiltration of SM1, uh, no vessel infiltration and uh, uh, grading G1 or 2, then we have a good indication for local treatment in all other cases, we have a high-risk situation, and if your pathologist gives you the information about the grading or a submucosal infiltration of more than um, the, uh, up to uh, more than 1,000 micrometer, I will show you now data on this topic, then the risk increases dramatically up to 20 percent. Um, the SM classification. Um, is a classification which you can only use if you have a, a, a resected specimen. It is not helpful for endoscopic treatment because you never will resect the whole submucosa. So therefore it's not allowed to uh, define the submucosal in three thirds. We usually use 1,000 micrometer at the border. Uh, Lesions up to 1,000 micrometer have a low risk of uh, uh, lymph node metastasis. It's about 1 to 2 uh, percent. And all the lesions 
beyond 1,000 micrometer have a higher risk of lymph node metastasis. We have heard about endoscopic ultrasound, and I think those of you who perform uh, endoscopic ultrasound know the difficulty uh, in exactly staging a tumor between uh, SM infiltration. Uh, therefore, the Japanese colleagues again used the so-called tumor lifting sign after injection of some saline. You see different types of lifting, and if you have a, a so-called completed lifted or soft sign, then the majority is mucosal cancer, and there's no risk of recurrence, and these are good candidates, those patients, for endoscopic resection. If you have an incomplete or non-lifting, then you have to be careful because many of those have a SM3 infiltration and the recurrence uh, will definitely occur. So these are not candidates if you have an incomplete or non-lifting sign for endoscopic treatment. Here are some examples. The lesions are not very large in diameter, but all these lesions didn't have a nice lifting sign um, and therefore we recommended surgery in this case. Another example of a polypoid lesion in the rectum. Um, using new technologies of NBI, for example, chroma endoscopy, you see the vessels um, dilatated, as shown here, a non-structured pit pattern. And this is a classical a sign of a deep submucosal infiltration. And therefore, also this lesion is not an indication for local treatment and should be treated by surgery. We can discuss whether TEM might be uh, an option in this case because then you can have an exact staging of the whole submucosa, but it never will be a candidate for an ESD procedure. Another problem is the size of the lesion. We know um, larger lesions uh, of lesions larger than two centimeters have a recurrence rate of 20 to 30 percent, and <clears throat> therefore um, a, a whole resection, a complete resection, is not possible in lesions larger than two centimeters. Um, our zero resection is not uh, uh, achieved in those lesions. Several of the uh, colleagues in Japan do not speak from uh, our zero resection if uh, uh, endoscopic sub, uh, uh, EMR, piecemeal EMR is performed. The aim should be an R0 resection, the complete resection of the whole lesion. An endoscopic submucosal dissection is a technique which allows to resect large areas of uh, uh, the mucosa. First, you have to delineate, to mark the lesion very exactly using the new technologies. Then, injection, as I told you, the lifting sign, if you have a nice lifting sign, and then it's a good indication for, piecemeal, uh, for, for ESD, for local treatment. Then you start your procedure by circumferential incision, the submucosal dissection, and finally you can resect the whole specimen. This is a, um, a case of a, a large, 10 centimeter large, mixed uh, uh, type lesion with a big nodule here. In the uh, histology, uh, there was only a uh, uh, adenoma with benign uh, histology. And we started with ESD in this patient. Uh, this is so-called autofluorescence technique, which demarcates uh, lesions very nicely. And then after uh, exactly uh, uh, marking the lesion, we uh, inject with a special knife, this is a so-called hybrid knife, the lesion. And then you can see the nice lifting sign in this area and then you start with dissecting the submucosa. We have started with this treatment, I mean, about 10 years ago, and I have learned a lot from my colleagues in Japan. Um, they teach us in my clinic as well, and it takes time when you start with this technique. Um, meanwhile, we have more than 500 patients treated with ESD in my clinic. Um, these this is the submucosa, the blue uh, color is indigo carmine, which is helpful to uh, the very exactly where you are working, which uh, area of the submucosa. Here is the colon, the mus muscle propria. And then you 
can step by step dissect the whole lesion and the whole procedure of course takes time. It, in this situation it was two hours and we had a large area resected more than 10 centimeter and it was a benign lesion or it was a lesion with a mucosal cancer and there were no additional treatment, surgery or uh, other treatments were necessary in this case. I hope I can show you the final result now. This is the area behind this fold, so about 10 centimeter resection. And the pathologist can tell you, is this lesion now complete resected? Now the first data came from Japan. This was the first paper on rectal cancer uh, in 2006. There were uh, 35 cases. Initial block resection rate was nearly 90%, but the arterial resection was only uh, about 60%. Um, Follow-up of three years showed there was only one recurrence. There were some perforations, which is a problem for this technique, and some uh, uh, needed surgery due to deeper infiltration of the submucosa. Meanwhile, Professor Saito from Tokyo compared EMR and ESD in this series, um, and there was two-thirds were carcinoma. The difference between uh, both techniques are shown here. Usually the lesion size is smaller for EMR, ESD is much larger. The time, it's very time consuming. However, you have no or nearly no recurrence and unblocked resection rate is higher, which is important for carcinoma. Uh, nevertheless, perforation rate still a problem at that time, which is now decreasing more and more. This are uh, uh, data again from uh, Dr. Saito from last year. And this are our uh, data. Uh, in, in one year, and it showed that the lesion size in our clinic, five centimeters, it takes long, it takes two hours, even in Japan, but the data, we have a block resection rate of 96 and a curative resection rate of 85%, and this were our learning curve. We started uh, in 10 years ago with very, very uh, limited experience and not very encouraging data, and now we have data comparable to the colleagues in Japan. The only disadvantage is still the time. It's a, a, a limitation of this technique, I think. Um, at the moment, not all the patients are treated with ESD in, in Japan. They also use EMR. This was a prospective multi-center trial on 18 medium or high volume uh, centers. Uh, polyps larger than 20 millimeter were treated. And in this area, show, uh, this slide shows you that the uh, intramucosal cancer and submucosal cancer uh, are mainly treated with ESD if they are larger than four centimeter. Only the uh, smaller ones are treated with EMR uh, because you don't have an unblock resection with this technique. And um, the unblock resection rate, of course, was only 12% for lesions larger than four centimeter but you have a high unblocked resection rate of more than 90% using ESD. So in, in Japan at the moment, half and half polyps larger than two centimeters are treated with EMR or ESD. If a polyp is larger than five, four centimeters, um, three, uh, 76% are treated with ESD. If it's a mixed type, 80% are treated with ESD, and you have a, a local recurrence of a previous treatment, um, the Japanese colleagues recommend ESD in 100%. The perforation rate is now no major problem. Um, it's quite, it's nearly similar for both techniques. Um, a last uh, study um, on, a, on a paper who looked for the long-term follow-up of submucosal invasive colorectal cancer. Um, there were three groups, as mentioned, the low-risk group, and nevertheless, there was a statistically significant difference between rectal cancer and colon cancer, but no difference in disease-free survival or overall survival. And in the high-risk group, and this is, uh, I think, the main message, there was a difference uh, here in the uh, recurrence rate for the high-risk endoscopic uh, resection treatment and also influence on the disease-free survival and only those patients who had operation in the high-risk group, there was no difference between colon and rectum. So my summary is, um, if you have small lesions, smaller than uh, 20 millimeters, you can perform piecemeal EMR. The risk for malignancy is very low in this situation. If you use ESD, you can avoid recurrences. <coughs> if the lesion is larger, then 
um, Dr. Saito recommends ESD, and especially if you have a non-granular type lesion, um, the uh, Japanese colleagues recommend ESD. However, if you have a submucosal infiltration of more than 1,000 micrometer, then it's an indication for a surgical treatment, and sometimes um, you see this infiltration not before you have resected the, uh, the lesion, therefore uh, you have to use uh, techniques, new techniques like narrowband imaging, near focus, to define a lesion very exactly whether deep submucosal infiltration um, is possible, and if it is, you shouldn't treat it with endoscopic uh, treatment. So if you want to learn more about uh, ESD, you are invited and you are welcome to come to Augsburg. Dr. Uh, Oyama is uh, my teacher, and I think I have learned a lot uh, to uh, show you now data, all from our clinic. Thank you very much.